Hello, my name is Espen Anderson and I teach technology strategy for executive programs and MBA programs uh, at the Norwegian School of Management. My name is Hanno Roberts, I'm a professor in accounting and I teach management accounting and management control and some other stuff in the various uh, executive MBA programs of the Norwegian School of Management. And both Espen and me, we teach in the same programs and we have seen over time that students are wrestling a bit with doing casework case preparation, case analysis, case discussion. So we think that we can give them a little help on how to do this. So this video is for you on how to do case discussions, case preparation and case work. Now let's start with why do we do cases in the first place? Um, why not um, give um, straight um, talks or, or, or a set of PowerPoints or, or, um, or, or giving you uh, simpler, shorter uh, problems to solve. And the thing is, a, a management education is a preparation for being a manager. And in order to do that, you need to be able to solve problems like managers do. Now, there are many ways of, of thinking about problems, all the way from, from deep mysteries, which you have to use a philosophical um, approach to, to um, scientific problems, where you have to use the scientific problem-solving method with hypothesis testing and data generation and so on. Um, and then, you know, on the other hand, we have the, the really simple uh, problems that are, can be answered rules-based. If condition A exists, then we do um, uh, alternative B. Um, now, in there, um, between scientific and rules-based, are problems that are complex, but where solutions are recognizable based on experience. And, and we call that way of understanding or, and, and recognizing problem pattern recognition. And, and that can only be taught in a form of simulation and practice, and, and cases allow us to do that by presenting problems that lend themselves to the same problem-solving technique as managers use in real life. What Espen says about pattern recognition, I would like to stress is seeing the big picture. Uh, one of the usual problems that we meet in class mm -hmm. is that students look at it as a set of uh, independent exercises uh, for which they can actually run some calculations, they have some answers, and they simply then accumulate the answers and say, okay, we have calculated this, we have run the numbers on that one, this is a scenario there, so this is what you should do. But I like to stress that you don't see the big picture that way. And the case typically is the, represents the messiness of reality. Mm. So things do not represent themselves as a typical marketing problem or a typical IT problem or a typical accounting problem. They're interwoven. And this interwovenness, this, this, this getting together is what students need to learn to separate out, but then accumulate again as an answer that involves all elements, not just an element that refers to marketing or an element that refers to accounting or an element that just refers to IT. The answers also have to be synthetic. So the big picture is important here because you have to see as a future top manager how these things hang together. And that's what Espen calls pattern recognition and is what I call big picture. Now, um when we, we think about pattern recognition and a sort of understanding cases, I, I think it's very important to stress that there are no correct answers in, to a case. Um, and, and people often you know, think that there is. They, they use expressions like, um, I'd like to crack the case, you know, find a solution and present the correct solution. And, and sometimes, um, you know, after a class, they, they ask me, so, so what is the correct solution mm -hmm. to the case? And, and my answer might be either, I don't know, for instance, what the company really did. And, and even if I know what really happened, you know, usually it's a real situation in a case. Um, even if I know what happened, that may not be the right thing to do. Companies make mistakes too. Um, so don't search for the correct answer. You need to understand that the whole purpose of case discussion, of case teaching, is to, is to understand a complex problem, to generate some alternative solutions and then, you know, choose one of the solutions and argue for it, but be open to uh, the possibility that there are other solutions or that your arguments may be wrong. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think it's very important to know that when you have this idea that you have run numbers on a part of the, of the problem, that you think, well, the numbers and this is the outcome of the calculation and therefore this is the answer and that's the solution to the case, so 
work done. It's not really like that, because the outcome of a calculation is the beginning of a discussion. It might very well be that, for example, a financial piece of analysis related to the case uh, can be overruled by a qualitative argument coming from the strategy corner. So uh, there is no clear answer. Like uh, Espen says, many times we get questions about, give us the answer to the case. Please post the answer on Blackboard. Or what did the company do? And like Espen said, the company also makes errors because they have arguments maybe political arguments or circumstantial arguments that washed away all the careful analysis of the case. Finally, there is also the issue around what we want to look for. And uh, coming back to the, to the issue of what is the answer, when teachers or case instructors look at the case, they don't look at what you come up with at the final end. They look at how you got there. How did you do your analysis? Did you identify the problems? Did you see what are the interests of different players in there? because there are different sets of arguments, different sorts of problems, did you recognize them, did you interrelate them? So what's really important here is that you build a line of argument. That you don't go from, this is a description, that's the solution, boom, there we are. You have to cascade towards the solution. And that cascading progress is the building of a line of argument, where you can see how those things are interwoven how you can see how you, the big picture coming in. This is a marketing piece, that's a finance piece, that's an IT piece. These arguments are interfacing and some of them actually are washing away the other argument or maybe accelerating or leveraging one of the arguments. So the line of argument is what we want to see in the case. How did you get there? The road is the most important part, not where the road stops. And with that, it's time to go on to the next video where we'll look at case preparation. How do you prepare um, for a case discussion? Um, what are the steps you can do? And so on. See you there.